Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to this morning's session um, on, on banking and on your finances. My name is Mike Shapford. I am the Deputy Chief Executive Communications at the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. What I'd just like to do for the, the, the small crowd that's here today is just acknowledge the challenges that you've all had over the last two years dealing with what Mother Nature has thrown up against us. Uh, none of us expected um, to have to deal with any of those kinds of situations. And the pressures that it actually has put on people, um, both on individual pressures, family pressures, housing pressures, but also on financial pressure has been significant. And the thing that we've seen over the last day or two here with people coming through is people are still finding it really tough. So I'd just like to say to you that we, we know it's been really tough um, and we know it's going to be tough for a wee while yet. We're going to go into winter and that's going to be a challenge as well. So at the heart of any recovery, it is really about you and about um, your loved ones and the people you hold dear and just to make sure that you keep going because it is hard. So I just want to acknowledge that before we jump in and, and move on. So we're going to talk about um, the banks and one of the things that I'd uh, uh, like to do before we um, pass over to some of our panel members um, who represent some of the major banks here is that um, I've been really heartened by uh, the courage and commitment that the banks have shown here in Canterbury right from the beginning. Um, we have known that the banks have stood right beside us at Sarah and elsewhere right through the last two years. And I was just saying to one of the guys here before, um, what I noted was that um, they looked to uh, look after their staff here who were going through this whole thing, um, but also um, they showed a sense of optimism about knowing that it's been really tough, but also knowing that things are gonna get much better. So look, I am really heartened by their willingness to come uh, and talk. Now, what I do see here is not lots of people, and actually that also tells me something, is that um, people aren't that worried about the banks and about uh, their support. There's other things in front of them right at the moment. Um, but as insurance issues and as rebuild issues get sorted, I think more and more there's going to be conversations being held with the banks. So what I would like to do is I've got um, a series of questions which have been passed to us from the community. Um, and I'm going to ask um, someone from the panel to start off the discussion and, and the rest of them will chime in. Now there's going to be an opportunity to ask questions. What I would ask though is that if it's of a personal nature about your own financial situation, there is an opportunity to ask them after this seminar or go along to one of the uh, booths. All of the banks are here represented today and they can help you with whatever you need. And I guess I'm in the game of communications and it's about key messages or takeouts. And the one thing that um, I got from yesterday's session of a similar nature is that you have to have a conversation with them and don't be afraid to. If you're really worried or concerned about your financial situation or you want to do something, they are there ready to listen. And don't do it when it's too late because it's actually not worth it. All right, so it's my pleasure then um, to uh, introduce to you um, the, the banking team. Um, we've got um, Abby Wallace with us from ANZ. We've got Grant Gilbert here from ASB. Uh, we have got, jumping, where's my... You guys are the stars. <laughs> we've got Christina Gardner here from BNZ. And Tracy Berry uh, from Kiwi Bank and Mark Ford here um, from Westpac. So look, I thought question number one, um, I'd ask it of the banks and tell us um, what are they seeing out there in terms of um, the customers that are coming in and some of the concerns that they have. And I'm going to ask Tracy from Kiwi Bank to lead off. Thanks, Mike. Um, generally speaking, we're seeing a very buoyant market, as I'm sure anyone who's currently in the market for buying and selling will have experienced themselves. It is very buoyant. Obviously, we've got a bit of a supply issue in that we don't have sufficient supply of housing stock to meet the demand. So we're seeing, um, you know, appreciating prices in a lot of areas, in fact, across all technical categories, but most notably one and two. Um, from a consumer perspective, we're still seeing a lot of optimism, but then we have the other camp that are um, not so optimistic. Um, and 
and to, I guess, reinforce Mike's earlier message around speaking to your bank earlier, uh, one of the things that we, we, we do see from time to time is people whose situations have changed, maybe because of the earthquake, maybe not, but it may be that they've lost an income or they've lost some rental income in a property that can no longer be tenanted. Um, and sometimes they've got a fear of speaking to the bank because of the, you know, a perception that there'll be, you know, repercussions that are not positive for them. And I guess from, from all of our perspectives, um, we all have specialist teams on board to actually transition people through that phase. And there's actually quite a lot that can be done um, to assist, whether it be relief packages or, um, you, you know, re reducing the, the loan repayments for a while. So, so if you do find yourself in that circumstance, um, do come and engage with your bank because we're actually here to support you. So um, if I can just add on that, if, if people are feeling a bit like that, how, how do they do that? Um, so Christine, do you want to just give us a start off on that? Yeah, look, it's um, really important that you touch base with um, a relationship you might have existing, um, if it's a, a branch nearby, or um, I know all the banks have got 0800 numbers you can contact, and uh, those people can direct you to the right people to talk to. Okay, does think, anyone, yeah. Sorry. sorry, just to elaborate on that, um, it's really, our, our business is fundamentally about people and we acknowledge right now that different people have very, very different circumstances and there's, there's no two things are the same. So as the team have said, if you, if you have some concerns, please feel free to approach your branch. Um, most of the banks have financial help teams or specialist teams that are, are set up that understand what's happening in Christchurch and most of us have relief packages that can make that a little bit better or there's always a way of solving a problem. So what, what if I'm feeling really overwhelmed? I, I just know that it doesn't feel right. I'm feeling like I don't know what to do. How do I start the conversation? Mark, what, what, what would I do if I was approaching um, you guys? Certainly, I, just, just reiterating you know, communication. So come, come in and talk to us. I mean, our, our people um, have, although every situation is unique, uh, they've, they've dealt with a lot of different situations and a lot of them have been through it in terms of our staff, a lot of them have been through it themselves. So they understand uh, some of the complexities. We're spending a lot of time, and I know the other banks are as well, uh, on, on training our staff to ensure that they can cope with the emotional demands as well as the actual financial uh, concerns that some people have. And a lot of people are in situations they've never been in before and never thought we'd be in. So I, I would come and talk to, uh, talk to your local branch, talk to your local business manager, talk to your relationship person, uh, or, or, or phone up, and uh, just engage and communicate, and uh, we're here to help. So what about, uh, when is it too late? Is it too late, Abby, when uh, do you come in, when, whenever can you come in early, late, when, when's the right time? Look, the, the earlier the better, but it's never too late. We are here, we do have systems and processes in place to to meet your needs at any point in this um, you know journey I suppose and getting you to your future point it has already been a couple of years so it, you know it is never too late and it probably will be a lot more to come um, so don't be worried if you're feeling good now uh, and if things start changing in the next two to five ten years we're always here to support you guys and get get you through um, and support the community as well so uh, even if they, if some people here know of some of their friends or family that are worried, they can come in and just talk and talk through the process that they might go go through to, to get some help. Definitely, yep. Come and have a chat with us. Um, as we've already said, communication is vital. The more information you guys have, the better equipped you are to make decisions um, and move forward in your own lives. And we're here to provide all that information for you. Okay, so that, that's great. One of the questions that um, was put to us by the community was around lending in, in the technical category areas. I mean, are the banks lending in all of the technical category areas, especially TC3? So I, I'll ask that one uh, to you, Tracy. Is that um, right? Yeah, so as, um, as we've got more understanding through the land drilling and assessment program and the release of the technical foundation requirements, it's enabled all of the banks to have a greater understanding. So I'll speak on behalf of Kiwi Bank, but I know all of the banks are in the same position and that we're all lending on TC3. So as it stands, um, with the exception of Red Zone, um, technical one, two or three, the, the, the technical rating of the property or the land um, is inconsequential in terms of your ability to seek funding or not, it comes down to the case by case of the individual um, and their financial scenario as opposed to the technical category of the land. So, so that's a yes but not completely, so <laughs> does anyone else want to, to add, what, what, what are some of the things that the bank considers when, you know, when we're talking case by case? 
That's a really good question, Mike. I know there's a lot of confusion around do I need more deposit um, to borrow on a TC3? And, and from a BNZ perspective, no, we don't. We don't make decisions on deposit on land classification on its own. So we take in a lot of factors around somebody's individual financial situation. That's another reason why it's really important to come and talk to uh, somebody who's actually skilled at, at understanding what those requirements are. Yeah, can I just add to that? I think you know the most single most important thing that we look at when we're um, assessing a loan is, is the ability to service it. So we don't want to put you in a situation where you uh, borrow too much and you can't afford to make the payments. So servicing is the most important thing. And the other thing we look at uh, quite carefully now is, is insurance. So making sure, so particularly um, you know in the Christchurch market now, making sure that you have uh, what sort of insurance you have going forward. Okay, so look, one of the questions was about how banks do work with insurance companies. So I'd, I'd be really good to the whole panel to sort of answer this uh, in terms of how you're dealing and working with insurance companies. I think the, the reality at the moment is that the insurance in the banking industry is probably closer aligned than it ever has been. Um, a simple example of that is if, if you have a property in Christchurch at the moment, and most of us um, do, and you have damage to that property, you're reliant on the underlying insurance contract to make it good and put it back to the way it was before. So if you're selling a house, you need to make sure that you can pass your insurance contract on to a, another purchaser, particularly if it is in TC2 or TC3. And if you're buying a house, you need to understand the insurance contract that you are getting if you are taking the existing insurance contract as part of that agreement. So what I would encourage you to do is if you're buying or selling is engage with your solicitor early so that they can talk you through that process and you can be very clear about the insurance contract you're passing over or the insurance contract you're about to receive. If you're an existing homeowner and you have damage to your property, the reality is that in most cases the insurer will repair it and take it back to the way it was before, which is going to preserve your equity. So absolutely, we're, we're very, very much aligned with the insurance industry and we're very uh, reliant on both the banks and the insurers to work closely together. Okay, that, that's great. Does anyone else have any, anything to add on that one? Ditto. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, so well, one of the other questions is, okay, so I get a payout. I've got a payout either from my insurer or EQC, um, and, and it, it comes, what, what do I do with it? So the bank becomes involved when we have a financial interest in the property, so when we have a mortgage over your property. Um, in terms of EQC settlements, so payouts, they'll be directed to the bank. Uh, then we would be in contact with our customers, uh, have a chat around how we manage those funds, what's best going to work for you, if you've got any outstanding home lending or if it's better suited in, in way of a deposit form. Um, same kind of thing with insurance, you will need us to sign off on the settlement if we have a financial interest in that property, um, but we can work with you in terms of what the settlement is and, and move you into that next step if it's a, a rebuild or repair, if, if whatever option you guys are looking at. I suppose the biggest thing is that if you receive um, any payments that don't come directly to the bank, so let us know about them because often the insurance company, if we're on paying them for the rebuild, they will want the whole kind of settlement from EQC, not just maybe the larger overcap payments that you receive. So have a chat with us. Um, we can manage that for you and make sure that you're ready to go at that next step. Okay, that's great. Um, I do have a question about, I mean, how, how, how are the banks, how are each of you configured to, to manage the response around earthquake recovery? Have you got dedicated teams? What are the kind of things they do? Where are they? Are they in, are they in every bank? Um, how, how, how does it work? So I guess if I start from ASB, we've got um, a series of teams. So if I start locally, all of our staff in the branches, um, they live in Christchurch, they know Christchurch and understand, and as was um, the comment was made before, we've undergone a lot of training so that our staff locally are able to assist. We've also got teams who are receiving payments, so the insurance payments, and um, they are making the appropriate contact with our customers to make either reductions to your loan, put that money on term deposit and talk to you about the next steps. And we've got financial help teams who are very, very familiar with what's happening in Christchurch and are able to assist our customers with those decisions where perhaps people are struggling. And more locally, we've got um, a person who is dealing with our ASB customers and um, our corporate insurance partner, IAG, just to smooth out some of the humps and hollows and make sure that the process is um, working well between the two entities. 
So very similar from an ANZ perspective, we've got a lot of different um, teams working together across the network. Uh, locally we have an earthquake centre that's set up in New Brighton and we have dedicated staff there that will take you through um, receiving of payments, dealing with repairs, rebuilds, um, your situation. So you'll have kind of like a case manager that will take you through that process. All of our branches are equipped um, to know when they need more specialist advice or if they can just deal with that on the front line. Um, I suppose we've got mobile people that can actually come to you, so if it doesn't suit to come to a branch, we can send someone out to see you, at, you know, when it suits. Um, yeah, so we're all working together. Great, thanks Abby. Uh, very much the same for the BNZ. We have uh, specialist knowledge at branch level, and then when it starts to escalate into some complexity, because we understand that there is quite a bit of complexity for different people, we have a specialist earthquake support team uh, who can look after that. And now as we're starting to move into the rebuild phase as well, we have a team that are specialised in that new build um, situation who can help customers. Thanks, and again, very similar for KiwiBank. We've got a specialist dedicated um, um, customer care team that pre predominantly deal on the insurance and the EQ insurance receipt as a case manager with our clients, but they also um, deal one-to-one -one with our red zone customers and anyone who requ requires any relief um, type facilities. So they have the bandwidth um, and authority to, to do um, things necessary for clients that need to be done to get them over, you know, a bridge that they might have in their financial circumstances. Um, we also have um, dedicated proactive calling out to all of our TC3 customers um, and we have our specialist lenders that uh, with local decisioning and empowerment which means in most instances they can approve themselves um, lending for, for new builds and for purchases. Yeah, we're, we're no different. We have a, a local uh, support team, uh, customer um, customer care support team for earthquake uh, support. So we'll we'll proactively phone customers if um, um, uh, if funds are received in from EQC or insurers, etc. Uh, we spend a lot of time uh, training uh, our frontline staff as well, and uh, yeah, we we we're proactive where we can be. Okay, um, so oh, that's great. So the next question really is about a checklist for, for things um, for property owners when buying a house. So I'm going to ask Mark to talk through that. And then the second question I'll be asking Tracy to talk about is if you're going to build a new house. So Mark, can you sort of focus on buying of a house existing? And, and I'll ask Tracy, you can sort of talk about new builds. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, if, if you're purchasing a property, it's the single biggest decision most people will ever make in their lives. So certainly encourage you to do do your research and uh, have have a look at um, you know what's out there. And, and uh, there's whole lots of checklists available. I think real estate agents uh, at Westpac we have a, we have a home club website which has a checklist of things to go through, etc. Whole lots of um, lots of things to look for. But I guess the the single biggest thing to look at now that more than before is is their status with insurance. So that'll be, if you're buying an existing property, uh, look at the um, scope of works, look at the state of the existing claim, and, and look, look to ensure that the vendor's insurance will flow through to you when you purchase the property. Uh, and, and not just that it will flow through to you, but that you have the same cover that the vendor had as well. So a number of insurers are working towards indemnity rather than full replacement. Uh, so you've got to really look for any pitfalls in any ongoing insurance. So check out status of claim and ongoing insurance is the most important uh, extra thing. Thanks, Mark. Right. Thank you. Um, from, from a build perspective, we're, we're very aware that a lot of people have found themselves in a situation where they're now building a home that wasn't part of their plan. Um, so, but it is, it is an opportunity, of course, to um, sit back, reflect on the, the type of home that you want. So there are some additional considerations when building a home. Um, some of them will include things like foundation requirements. So the foundation requirements now have been, um, have been developed and they do differ um, for technical categories, but also the, the type of soil you've got, particularly in TC3. And you can go to the MBIE website for a lot more information on that. But depending on the, the, the type of land soil that you've got, you may find that your foundation requirements will be more expensive than you may initially have anticipated. Now in many instances that may well be covered by the insurer but it's always best to check that before you commit to a build contract because what you may find in the build contract even, even for a, a relatively fixed price build contract is that the one area that's not fixed price relates to the foundations and that may be a $5,000 cost or that may be a $55,000 cost so it's good to get a sense of clarity around the foundation requirements and certainly if you're borrow, borrowing a large amount to 
towards that build, your banks will probably require some comfort around what the foundation costs may be as well. Um, the consent process and so forth, if you're using a, if you're losing a, using a large uh, building company, you'll find that they take care of all of that for you. Um, if you're using a, a, you know, a sole trader or someone who's an independent builder, you may find that there's a lot more onus on you to project manage the job. So I think that um, you, know, you do need to reflect whether you feel that you've got the requisite skills and expertise to project manage that. Um, what we are seeing is that there's a few have had a total loss, so you've lost your home in the earthquake. There's a couple of ways that you might go about doing a rebuild build, it may be that the insurance company will run that process for you or it may be that you cash out, you take the cash and you run that process yourself but then you also carry any potential overruns of cost. So always think about the potential for overruns of cost if you are considering cashing out and rebuilding. Um, and then from the insurance perspective, obviously the continuity of insurance is really important as we know in Christchurch and once you've cancelled one insurance policy you'll be reliant on getting a new one. Um, so Ki Kiwi Bank can facilitate new build insurance across all of the technical categories, including TC3. But there's two types of insurance you want to make sure you get. One's for when the house is completed, um, but there's also the, the ability to get insurance when it's being built, which is a different type of insurance, which is contract works insurance. So you want to make sure that you've got access to both of those. Uh, the contract works may well be provided from your building company, but definitely do check. And, and, and your teams all help, for all banks, help people through that process. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Um, my, my last pre-prepared question is around, I guess, investors. There are going to be some people that are wanting to put some of their, their money uh, into investment properties and those sorts of things. So I'll ask Christina um, just to talk a little bit about it. There are people that are looking to do that. How can they do that with, with your bank? Yep, absolutely. It's about coming and talking to us. Um, we all sit down and uh, work through assessing the risk. Um, as I was saying earlier, we, the last thing we want is to see people in a situation where they are unable to, uh, to cover their mortgage repayments. So it's about working with us and uh, we'll go through that step by step with people. Great. So um, ladies and gentlemen, um, we've got an opportunity if anyone would like to ask questions of the panel members. We've got a microphone here. So uh, is, does anyone want to ask a question? <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Um, just there. Thank you. Uh, tēnā kakarū uh, katoa, e miki atadei kia koutou. It is um, good to have people who are dealing with money in front of me. And one of the things that I do look at from the average person like me is money as a whole. In other words, that who do I give my money to to look after? From a bank point of view and the ordinary person's point of view. You hear a lot of things happening in that outside, the, uh, <coughs> outside that in terms of uh, people who have, shall we say, triple A's in terms of banks, or they have another way of looking at it, like uh, maybe uh, CBS, for example, here. They are now a bank, but only just. <laughs> the question I would like to ask, how do I weigh up whether I should put my money into CBS, or BNZ, or ASB, or the other people who are here? Is that a fair question at this stage? That's a very good question, sir. <laughs> Who wants to pick that one up first? All right. Um, in terms of um, individual advice, all of the banks here have qualified authorised financial advisors. Now, the role of a financial advisor, it's a, it's a, um, it's a regulated role. It requires the first principle of, a, of the advice is that they must act in the, the client's best interests. Um, so, so what I would suggest is in the first instance is it, it shouldn't in theory matter who, which organisation you, you engage with in terms of independent advice. But if, if it's around the banks, all of the banks will, generally speaking, only talk to their own if it's around deposits their own deposit. So it would be highly unlikely that a, a BNZ financial advisor will recommend that you go and pop your funds with with ASB. Um, now that said, um, the retire um, sorry they're not called that anymore, the Commission of Financial Literacy and Retirement Income um, which is the sorted website um, is a good point for some independent I guess because they are completely independent of all of the banks. Some independent analysis um, around that and you can also get a, a roll up of all rates and ratings from interest.co.nz. 
Can I just um, add to that? I, I know there's been a lot of dialogue and commentary around banks overseas, but I think you'll find that uh, the New Zealand banks are exceptionally well capitalised. We have very, very strong parents, and the Reserve Bank Act actually requires us to behave and act in a certain way and have things like capital adequacy requirements. We are very, very heavily regulated. So there is a difference between overseas organisations and the New Zealand banking market. And as Tracy said, we all have um, qualified financial advisors and we're all required to behave and act in appropriate ways and have appropriate capital adequacy. I guess just, just adding to that, there is the other point of, of risk in return. So. Uh, Sometimes there's, there's places to put your money uh, that you that are higher risk, and uh, you would expect to have a higher return from that. And you, you've got to make that decision, and, and um, uh, in terms of your your risk profile, and speak to a, a, an authorised financial advisor about those risks and returns. So I, I guess then, if I could summarise, it's about um, get good advice, um, and and if it doesn't sound right, then get some more. Um, and get as much advice as you need. Um, and, and I suspect that if, 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 if the gentleman wished to have a conversation with each of you um, and, and to see what was on offer and how you could do it, that, that's an opportunity then to look in their eyes and actually um, and hear what they have to say and, and, and maybe it's the quality of the service as well. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? All right, so I'll, just before we wind up, I'll, I'll just ask um, each of our um, panel members, just to sum up, I think, really, um, if we are giving advice here out to the group uh, in terms of banking in the next year or so, um, some of your thoughts about what they should be thinking about. If we start off with you, Grant. I think the key, the key thing that we've touched on today is um, communication. So no matter what your position is, if you're unsure, seek some support and seek some advice. The, the reality is that two years post an event, some people are in very, very different stages, but most of us all have um, decisions that we need to make about our financial futures and where we'd like to be. So please, our business, in terms of the banking business, is very, very much about people. Without people, we don't have a business, so please engage with us. We will support you to make appropriate decisions and support you with appropriate advice, or we should seek that advice right now. And I think we all acknowledge that there is a, almost a tsunami of information out there, so we'll help you um, become clearer around that. As a, as a business and um, as an industry, we are very, very committed to supporting Christchurch and getting it back on its feet. The reality is that um, Canterbury gives a fair chunk of GDP for this country, and we want to make sure that that continues and or grows. So we're absolutely committed to Christchurch. We were at an early stage from an ASB perspective, we put in place um, relief packages in a short period of time for our customers. We've got a growth package out there now, so whether you want to buy or build a residential home, start a business or build a commercial dwelling, a uh, commercial property, sorry, we have a growth package that's out there now. So on behalf of the industry, we're absolutely committed to Christchurch and getting it back on its feet. I think you've summed that up rather well. <laughs> um, from our perspective, being the ANZ, that's exactly it. It's communication and information. So the more you communicate with us, the better we are equipped to give you some information or help you forage through all the information that's out there and make the best decisions for yourselves. Um, we are here to be a part of the rebuild with you and support you through this. I think it's quite an exciting time for everyone. There's a lot happening out in the community as well as in our own homes. So we're really here to support you guys, get there um, and take advantage of a quite a unique opportunity, I think. Look, from a BNZ perspective, uh, we feel very much the same. We are part of the community. We are locals. We also know that um, for many of our customers, everybody's not at the same stage. So some people are ready to start rebuilding and move on and others are still working through the process. So I think it's really important um, to stress that we work together uh, as a team. We have different people with different skills throughout the network and it's a case of touching base with us, keeping in contact and we will certainly uh, work with the, the wider business to make sure that we are offering you advice and support for the right stage that you're at at the moment. 
Thanks. And from Kiwi Bank's perspective, we're the same. We are, you know, 110% committed to the region. Uh, we're particularly focused around anything that we can do to accelerate that, whether it be accelerating the residential rebuild or whether it be accelerating somebody out of a, a situation they think they have no options in. Um, so again, communication is key. Uh, we are proactively calling a lot of our customers. So if you're with Kiwi Bank and we haven't called you yet, please don't hesitate to, to call us. We, we do desperately want to help. Yeah, so, we, thank you. West, Westpac's uh, been in, uh, in Canterbury for over 150 years, and we employ over 800 uh, proud Canterburians, and through our 20 branches, call centre, a lot of our operations centre, all based in Christchurch, we're absolutely committed, like the others, to, to Canterbury. Uh, we, we're really, I mean, no one, no one likes uh, what we've been through, uh, no one expected it. Uh, I think we've all learnt as we've, we've gone along and developed packages like the other banks have uh, for Cantabrians. But we're really quite, I guess, enthusiastic and excited about the future of this fantastic city and just the, the, the way things are looking, the building that's starting to happen, albeit a little bit slowly. Uh, we've, we've, we've got hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to lend. In fact, we've an incredible amount of loans that have been approved and uh, people are just looking for property. So we're really, really keen to help and be part of, a big, uh, we consider banking an integral par partner to helping Canterbury move forward and we want to be a big part of that. Great. Um, so just, I'd like to sum up if that's okay. Year three um, is tough. All of the research and literature says year three and four after a series of major uh, disasters like we had are going to be tough. Um, now, we just need um, to help you get through that, that difficulty. And um, in terms of banks, we, we need them. Um, and what I, what I have seen is that they are looking to innovate and they are going to do things differently. So, I mean, if what I've heard today, it is about starting a conversation, even if you think you've had one before, maybe do it again, just to make sure that people know where you're at, you individually, the pressures you're going through, and you never know, they might actually be able to help. Um, and because their staff are here, they have been here right through these events and actually they understand. So um, lastly, this information um, will be available off the CERA website from early next week. Um, as soon as we can get each of these presentations edited, they'll be up. Information um, on um, what the banks are offering will be there as well. So get that information, use the communication that's on offer, get good advice and make your decisions. And, and mostly um, be as safe and well as you can be. So thank you very much and thank you to our panel members. Thank you.